We are back at it, and today is going to be real special. We have an interview today, and I am going to interview my wife. Yes, I said my wife. Now, my wife is a woman of truth, okay? She's going to give you the truth. And I'm going to start off by questioning her. Question number one. Did I copy what I'm teaching from anybody? No, you didn't. All right. Question number two. Have you heard anybody else teach what I'm teaching? Not as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I've been watching your videos and every time you do interviews, and what you taught me and our daughters. I mean, I never heard it from anybody else before. All right. Question number three. Now, you know, we've been in the Israelite movement and I shifted to Islam. How long you think that's been right now? About more than two years. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, when we were in the Israelite movements, I saw and noticed and caught that they the ones who copy it of Islam. Everything that pretty much they do, it was copy out of them. That is correct. That is so correct. Because I noticed when Nathaniel would tell the men to use wipes when they use the restroom. I was like, wow. Also, how in the FOI, they have the women separated from the men, just like in Islam today. And also the drills and the marches, you know, that all was copied from Islam and The Israelite camps today, doing those marches, that all originated from the FOI. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. Question four. What do you think about the Israelite movement? Well, to me, uh, first of all, I think they copy cats because um, before we joined them, you was watching videos from um, Islam and the marches and the way they teach and the women on one side of them and on the other. And then when we joined uh, Israel, the Israelite camp, I noticed that all they do there is from Islam. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Nathaniel or so-called Bishop Nathaniel was in Islam before. And he did his own movement, which is called IUIC. And when the whole time we were there was about a year, I saw that they do everything from the videos of Islam that you showed me before, um, that he was watching before we joined IUIC. And to me, they're copycats and they're really possessive. Um, they don't let you have your own life. They they just make you do whatever they want you to do. What If you want to do something, you have to check with them. They want you to ask for counsel. And to me, they're little puppets um, with the strings being pulled every time. They want to get out of the way and do something on their own. People cannot have their own lives and do whatever they want. They don't have freedom. Um, IUIC is really controlling and they call um, they call themselves Israelites, but um, to me they're just copycats. They're not the real truth. They don't teach the truth. They they teach. They use God's word and they twist it to their own benefits, and they translate it to their own benefits. And that's how people is being caught by that net. Um, I didn't like it because. I just, I was just very uncomfortable every time we was going there because 
they were not teaching God's word the way it was supposed to be teach and they were not telling or teaching the truth. It was everything for their own benefit. Just to me, they're little puppets. Okay. Now, far as going to the bathroom, explain that. How does that work? Well, going there, I mean, I felt like I was in elementary school that I had raised up my hand to go to use the restroom, and they took the sweet time to let you go because they had made sure um, other women was not in there. I mean, like I said, it was really controlling. They control everything, the way you, you had to go to the bathroom, the way you had to speak. If you got to go out and have a family day, you had to ask permission for leadership and for them to approve. I mean, everything's being controlled by leadership or so-called leadership. But um, that's why I say they're really possessive and controlling. I didn't like it because um, if you had to use the restroom, you had to raise your hand like you're not in elementary school, you know. Yeah. Why you had to raise your hand? I mean, it, there were grown people. Why do I have to raise up my hand to go use the restroom? <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I didn't like it. It's just so controlling. Okay. Now explain to me um, the experience you had with your daughters on being searched? Um, I didn't like it because, um, like I said, they're really possessive. As soon as you walk in, somebody has to, I mean, not walk in, but as soon as you come near the door of the building, uh, security has to come out and make sure who is coming in because they got cameras everywhere. They're so insecure. They have their insecurities everywhere or all around the building. They have cameras. And before you walk in the building, um, a security person had to come out and, and see how many people was going in. And as soon as you go in, <clears throat> you had to sit down on the lobby and you had to wait to be searched. And that was so uncomfortable because they, the so-called sisters, um, they had to search you up and down. And you had to be touched on your private parts just to make sure that you had no guns or no weapons or knives or whatever to go inside the sanctuary or the so-called sanctuary because um, nothing saint in there um, or sanctified. I was really, really uncomfortable because my daughters didn't like that either because they were being touched and I was being touched. And even though you were there for, what, 13 hours, 14 hours in that school, they were just checking you around and check, um, putting you the timing to go use the restroom. So what's the point of you being searched in the front office or no weapons and getting checked all over your body like you're at the airport? Okay. I felt like I was in LAX. You know, be, not even LAX checks you that deep like IUIC does. So I was really uncomfortable being searched um, everywhere and being touched where you, you were not supposed to be touched, especially uh, your so-called sisters. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, there was still being you were still being watched the whole time you was there. Um, you couldn't bring any sharp stuff, or you were limited on bringing pencils or pens, and they were really controlling on everything and. I don't know what's the point of you being searched at the beginning if you're going to keep uh, be searching you when you go to the restroom. and uh, it, it was so controlling. It was so uncomfortable. It was just frustrating. That's not love. That's not unity. That's just uh, fear. I, to me, that's fear. Um, if you're searching your so-called brothers and sisters when you walk in um, and check the time to go to the bathroom and all that all that is fear and supposedly they call it security but if you really profit why they checking you all the time and be insecure a whole around the whole building with cameras I mean I understand the cameras for security but I'm not being checked the whole time you know? okay all right now I want to tell the truth and shame the devil now we live in a day okay where women love pussy they do and sometimes they love it more than the guys and in these schools now you talked about how an experience of being touched now let's shine light on that I want you to fully expound on that where that happened at uh, Los Angeles Los Angeles school okay go ahead um, Los Angeles and uh 
couple of times in Bakersfield, California. I mean, they didn't go all the way down in L.A. I mean, yeah, they, they swipe your hand, like, on your part, like, all the way in. That was really uncomfortable, and my daughter said it like that as well. But in Bakersfield, they were kind of close to your parts, but your private parts. But still, I mean, what's the point of all the touching? If you have a, we a weapon that's thick, a gun is thick, a knife is thick. If you have something hanging in there, they're going to feel it. Like there's no need for you for them to go all that deep. Okay. All right, so we can testify, and I am a witness, that the daughters was complaining about that. And we know that testimony is truth, and that is in the L.A. School. Now, in order for you to go to another school, can you just go and visit any Israelite camp you want to visit uh, being a member? Uh, no, in order for you to visit another school, you have to send, uh, you have to talk to your leadership or the person that is in charge of sending all the info to the school you want to visit. They have to send your picture and your uh, whole info in order uh, and to them to the other school that way they know who's coming towards them you cannot just visit any school you have to ask for permission wow. to visit any school and as far as I'm concerned um, if you go to a different in Islam if you want to go visit different mosque they don't uh, ask all this info they just let you in so it's totally different than IUIC or is any Israelite camp that's but right whatsoever it's just they have all these securities just fear and controlling them. They just want to be possessive. they puppets with strings to me. All right. That's right. I can testify to the fact that we don't get searched in the mosque. And we don't have to have a permission slip signed like we a little kid to go and visit another mosque. Okay. So I can testify to that. Now, I want to ask you. Did I, me, did I give the Israelite movement a chance? Do you think I gave them a chance? Well, we were there for a year, but it's not like giving a fully chance. It's just that, like they said, they testing you, so we were testing them. Like, um, not testing, but proving. They call this word proving. They were proving to see if you were, like, a real brother and sister to join their uh, Israelite movement. So it's not really a, a chance thing. It's just they trying you out. It's just like I said, they're really possessive. That's not, that's not right. Okay, what I'm asking you is, when I started going there, did, I, did you think I gave them a shot? Like, how did I do there, is what I'm asking you. When I was at the school, how did I behave or conduct myself? Well, you're the one who decided for us to go there, and we did win, and you did give them a chance. You were doing everything that you were, they were asking you to do. Um, you was We was there, like, every time they had a high, a supposedly high holy day. Uh-huh. We was, which is not in the Bible that you're supposed to be doing that because that's in Israel, not in USA. Um, but they still do it just for whatever reason they stood because they're controlling you they don't want you to have your own life and freedom that's but right yeah um we gave them a chance and well we all there we put our brick or help out around the school we did everything we were supposed to do everything they asked we were in order that's what they say you have to be in order we were in order we were there the days they told us to be there we left the time they told us to leave um, every time they had any kind of event, we were supposed to be there. And if you weren't there, you would hear their mouth. Um, they were ashamed you. But we were set. We were there the whole time, the whole year. Um, even though when the times you couldn't go on the high holy days, me and my daughters did show up. We were um, helping in security and um, being trained in security and in the kitchen. But um, all the Israelite movement is a joke. I mean... I regret going there and giving them a chance because all the stuff they talk in the streets that they they can treat you, they show you love. All that is fake because they just want to drag you into it. They just want to pull you in 
and once you in there supposedly with love and once you in there it's totally different that's why a lot of people out here don't see it they I don't know why they wasting the time being in the streets with them listening to all their stuff how they teaching and they telling you oh yeah you my brother I love you that, that all that's fake me by experience you can hear by my own mouth that is fake all right so how you think I did far as the test scores and things like that? I mean, to me, pretty much you had a, <clears throat> not just because I'm your wife, but um, I got to admit that uh, uh, the time that you was in there, I mean, you had more wisdom than them. I mean, they, they have so-called captains of 300 that they can teach uh, 300 people and the bishops and the officers and or that maybe I think um, all this stuff is always just jealousy because they know they knew that you had more wisdom than them, they that you knew the word more than them, and that's why um, all that started. That's why you decided to leave because um, all that jealousy. I mean, you know, the Most High is against that jealousy, and they were just to me. You had more wisdom. Period. You had more wisdom than any of the captains, even the a bishop himself. Um, you had the, you knew your word. I mean, you've been knowing your word for years and years, right before you met me, and um, you were on your uh, test scores that they asked you to do. You was a hundred percent on, but they were just being picky. They were just being jealous. It's just it, it's a shame that they call you brother and sister when. That's no, there's no real love in there. They're doing everything the opposite of what God says. But to me, you was on point in the test. and had more wisdom to them, point blank. All right, all right. So, another question. Now, this might be a little off topic, but the Israelite camps are Christian. You believe Jesus died for your sins. You were Christian. You believe Jesus died, period. You were Christian. Okay. You a Christian. You believe Jesus is your Lord. You believe that Jesus is God. You a Christian. My question to you is, how do you feel about Christianity? I mean, yeah, you just said it. And the whole year we was there, I mean, I didn't see no difference than Christianity and Catholic Church. I mean, I grew up in a Catholic Church by force because I didn't like going in there for some reason. I didn't like all those idols all over the church because, um... Christianity, they don't have idols but in their churches, but they're still Christians. I mean, it's the same thing. And when we joined uh, the Israelite camp, there was to me, there, to be honest, there's no different. They, um, they said they're not Christians and stuff, but they worship Jesus. They think that's what they believe that Jesus did um, die for our sins. And even the so called Bishop Nathaniel said it so many times in class that. Jesus was the Holy Spirit, and they keep saying that he's the Son of God. All, all this stuff is just, all this stuff made no sense to me, because if you're reading it, the Bible, it's a, that's not what it says. They, Like I said, they interpret God's word to their own benefit, and that's how they're dragging people in there. But as soon as you go in there, and you're there for a while, you realize that they're twisting God's word, and they're not the people out there in the streets. They, they show you that they are. But to me, Israelites are nothing but Christians. I mean, I mean, their name says it, IUIC, Israel United in Christ. <laughs> it doesn't say IUIC, Israel United in God. It says Christ. Yep, yep, yep. And since we, you, you, you elaborated on how the Israelites camps, however you put it, Israelite cult camps, they Christian. And my question to you is, right now, today, if you was to meet a Christian on the street, what's the first thing going to come out their mouth? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Is they going to say, God bless you, or are they going to say, Jesus loves you? No, they say everywhere it has uh, Jesus love you all written all over. All over. Okay, so we're getting down to my last and final questions. Now... Do you hear online or on YouTube anybody exposing Paul? Not really. The first person I hear exposing him is you. I mean, when we've been having a, 
or studies you're the first person and like I said again not because I'm your wife and God is watching uh, and he knows I'm not lying but I never heard anybody teach up going against Paul and stuff but you okay all right and that is seen our ministry is seen in first Kings 22 33 where there was a certain man who drew a bow at random and he hit the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. Now, that's exactly what I did in this house to Paul. There's a man who was an enemy of God. And everything he did was hidden. And there came someone who spotted him out and took him down. That's why when you look at the P, when you look at that logo on the screen, you see the P, you see people aiming his arrow at Paul which is opposite, and it's tilting down with the arrow stuck in him. This ministry is exposing Paul, and that is the real gospel, because Joseph said, unless you bring me Benjamin, you will not see my face no more. Now, I want to go to the last and final question, and I would like to thank you publicly for being my support. Every day I'm doing exhortations, Every day I'm up in the studio and you never complain. You never Aww. gripe. You never want me to spend expensive, um, costly uh, gifts. You don't want me to put my money on you. You're never, you're just simple. And that's one thing I love about having you as my wife. You're quiet. You know your place. And... You've never once given me a hard time about spending time doing my exhortations. There's sometimes I don't even get to spend that much time with you because I'm up here giving the word to the people, regardless if they hear or they don't. I'm still spending time with the Most High, spreading his word. Now, my last question is, We've already answered it, but I want to answer it for the record because I don't want no copycats. I know people copycat and I know people steal. So my question is, is there anybody you know helping me teach what I'm teaching? Um, before I answer your question, I wanted to uh, make a statement. Um, you don't have to thank me for that. I mean, I'll be a foolish woman to be mad that my husband's up in the studio all the time doing God's work, only foolish women Aww. get upset because they have spent, don't pay, uh, spend quality time with them. So that won't make me a foolish woman to get mad because you appear doing God's word. Uh, God is first and top priority over anybody and over anything. So you don't have to take, thank me for that. God is first than me and then anybody else. So you don't have me uh, have to thank me for that. Okay. Um, but no. Uh, you oh. quit to answer a question. No, I didn't see anybody uh, teaching you that because, like I say, you've been on your word all the time. Um, to me, you're a man that loves God's word and likes to seek. Like they said, if you want to know, if you want to find out stuff, you have to seek to seek. You'll find, and you're a studier, and you have a lot of wisdom. On God's word, and no, I didn't see the all these years that we've been married. I never saw anybody um, teach you what you know right now, because you a studier. I mean, yeah, uh, the Israelites they try to teach you, but they wait. But that's the reason we out of that camp <laughs> because um, we don't think Jesus died for us. We don't think Jesus is God's son. We don't believe in Paul's teachings and the Israelites, that's what they go based on Paul's teachings. That's right. And to me, you're the first person who find that out and no, to answer your question, no, and nobody has to teach you that. You're a studier and that's what you do. All right. Now, a lot of these guys out here, they get on YouTube and thank you, babe. You know, you know, I love you. Thank you. Now, a lot of these people they get on youtube and they teach and they teach and they teach but they don't have a lifestyle like you know their life doesn't match what they say in other words their audio 
doesn't match their video. So I'm going to ask you a few quick questions. Just give me some brief answers. Do I have anybody running in out of my house? No, no. Okay. Do I get drunk? No, you don't drink at all. Do I smoke weed? No, you don't drink, smoke. Do I chew tobacco? No. Do I smoke cigarettes? No. All right. Am I a TV head? Definitely not. Okay. Now, that's just to put it out there because, like I said, you know, it's one thing um, to get online and say a whole bunch of stuff. But a lot of these brothers, man, their life is totally opposite. Like in the Israelite camps. They was trying to give me alcohol. Mm -hmm. They was trying to give me shots on Friday. Trying to give me wine. You know, on the so-called Sabbath day. Okay, they was trying to give me alcohol. And I never once, nor my wife, ever took any of their wine or any of their hard liquor. Because you know they say, bless the strong drink in the wine. <laughs> you know, we ain't never... Had anything to do with none of that What's stuff. What's the difference between worldly? They they do on the so-called high holy days. Yeah. They drinking, uh, they dancing worldly. Those this nasty music that they play these days. Um, so what's the difference from uh, so-called Christianity? Since they say they're not Christians, what's the difference between Catholics? Since they say they're not Catholics, they dance nasty music. They drink, even on the Sabbath day, the Sabbath, so-called Sabbath, not even over, and they have a beer in their mouth already. Yeah. And I know for a fact because I worked in the kitchen, and I brought it up to them because I was told. That's right. The high holy days. Now, remember, when they was trying to tell us that we need to celebrate the Passover and all these things. Now, I stood up in the congregation, and I said, according to the Bible... The Bible says that you are supposed to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. Now, didn't I ask them that? And what did they say? Yeah, you asked the main leader of the school because that school has so-called high leaders besides uh, their officers, so-called officers. You did ask in front of the congregation, and he said his answer was, yeah, that's in Israel, but we're not in Israel. We're in the United States. And the um, high leadership, which is the bishops, decide where to keep uh, the high holy days, where, when, and how is their choice. And we go for what they do and what they say. That's right. That's right. And once I, because like you said, Bay, you're right, it's been about two years. Because even though I was in the Israelite school, I was searching Islam at home. And I actually did an album. I did an album, a album entitled uh, People, and the name of that album was called This Stone Shall Be a Witness. Uh, 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 this Stone Shall Be a Witness. That's what it's called. And so while I was in that school, I was already, you know, searching and seeking Islam. So once I came to leadership and I was respectful, I Gave them a phone call to the soldier that was over me. I said, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this school no more. I disagree with your teachings. So then they said, oh, we're going to have leadership call, me, call you. And they called me the next morning. And, you know, I put the stuff on audio. Like, I got it, I got it audio recorded, okay? And the next day, the leadership called me. And, you know, I told them, hey... I don't want to be a part of your school. This has nothing to do with you. This is all about the teachings of Nathaniel. I disagree with them. And so at the end of the conversation, basically, they were saying, hey, you're not welcome no more until you repent. Now, I told you I don't want to be a part of the school. So how are you going to try to put me out when I've already volunteered to be out of the school? OK, and so then what did they do? They posted pictures of me and my daughters and my wife and posted it on a B, a bolo list. OK, telling uh, telling people to to be on the lookout for us. Now, how did you feel about that? Well, first of all, um, I think that's against the law to put somebody's picture up without the permission, especially because one of the daughters is a minor. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, 
she's still a child, so they did that without permission, and that felt me really, that made me feel really uncomfortable, and, uh, excuse my word, it pissed me off, because, um, we did everything, the whole year we were there, we did everything we was told, we never got out of control, we were not drinking, we were not dancing their nasty music, we were not putting up with, um, a, a lot of stuff, we saw stuff that they, it's out of order, and we never opened our mouth to snitch or to say anything. We saw a lot of people out of control, but we were there 13, 14 hours a day. We and my daughter joined the security. We were being trained by it. We joined the kitchen a crew to bring out leadership, their golden plates and everything all nice and neat. When we were getting all uh, the rest of the congregation was getting uh, the food on um. Kitty plates. Kitty plates, yeah, and kitty uh, drinks. And um, it hurt me um, because they, they put our picture up because they were look, they said we were uh, to look out for us like we were a threat. I mean, like, then we didn't even do anything. A lot of people got kicked out for um, sleeping with prostitutes. There you go. Committing adultery. There you going go. Going back on meth. And they still had communication with them. They didn't blast them in, in their own... Uh, website as they blasted us and after we left they said we were a threat because one of the sisters in there told us and after we left um, they said all this junk against us that we believe in and Mary that we're shipping Mary and I don't know we were not told all the details but we are not worshiping Mary we are not worshiping Jesus everything they're saying it's a lie that's why I said in this house only police on the only true God, the only one, not anybody else. We don't uh, partner him with nobody. God is the only one in this house and on our mouth and in our minds. Okay, so if you join this camps, you need to be really careful because they not what they tell you they are. They bring you in there and they make you work as little slaves. You're the little puppets. They pull your strings their strings their the strings they have on you to their own benefit so if you join this camps i would suggest you shouldn't there you go you need, if you're there you need to be out because they don't love you like god i mean we left and they put on their own telegram they said do not fellowship with this people where in the hell did the Bible say, God says, oh, you did this, skip you, I don't know you anymore. I never knew you. He never says that God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's a patient God. This people does nothing but their own benefit. If you leave their school and good terms and everything, they still blast you on their telegram. They make you look like the worst people. And that God says, do not bear false witness against your own brethren. There and that's go. what they do. They lie against us. And they call us our brothers and sisters. They lie against us saying that we worship Mary and that we do this and we do that. They made a bunch of lies. And we're, uh, by experience, it, we were told that's what they said and that's a lie. We don't do none of that. So um, if you in this school or any IUIC school, I suggest you to leave, run. <laughs> like run up out of there because they fake they're liars they only love you for their own benefits with their teeth out they don't really love you how they say they love you they doing everything the opposite of what god says and I, I was mad when they post our picture especially with my minor daughter in there that they make all these lies and we were there all the time they needed us that we were there we were giving all my daughters were giving the so-called alms 200 300 dollars for their school or supposedly school because we don't know where the money is going to just like christian churches we don't know where the money is going to but you see pastors with the uh, um doja gavana and coach and all them we know where the money is going so there you go iuic ain't no different than christian schools they fake they don't love you they just use you for their own benefit you just puppets there you go now isn't it true, and we're going to close with this one, isn't it true that Nathaniel called a Mexican person? Are you Mexican? You Mexican? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, when I saw the the, again, you tell me about that. What happened? Excuse my language again. That pissed me off because I'm full blooded Mexican, and he called this a uh, Mexican brother who left his church or his school. He called him a wet bag. Okay, and spicks, and he calls black people niggas. So, what kind of bishop? A bishop supposed to be blameless. There you go. So why is he calling his own people niggas and he's calling Mexicans wetbacks? I mean, Mexicans, between Mexicans, we can call each other that, but when a different colored person calls you wetback, that's an insult. So that pissed me off because I am Mexican and that really offended me because that tells you that he only uh, picks his own people and he's only in love with his own kind. And the Mexicans are the only ones. As a matter of fact, all the leadership, I don't see no Mexican up there. All you see is Puerto Ricans or blacks. Or Dominicans, not full-blooded Mexicans. So that tells you who he prefers, who he has to respect the persons. When God has no respect the persons, but IUIC do. And he called Mexicans wetbacks, and he called us spicks, and thus and then. So, and if you're still in IUIC... If you're Mexican, then I don't know what kind of Mexican are you. Because if you're Mexican and you heard your leader call you a wetback, why in the hell are you still in there? You're yeah. supposed to have pride and get the hell out of there. Yeah. So, you know, that right there was a low blow. Like my wife said, according to Paul's teachings, the Christians are supposed to be blameless and a bishop is supposed to be blameless. There is no way. For you to call a Mexican a wetback. That right there, that should have been a red flag. Skip a red flag. That was a that was a flare. <laughs> that was a flare bomb. That was a torch. That was a torch. You were supposed to get ghosts. You were supposed to get little and get up out of there. Okay, so there you have. That's just the, the interview. And we still are expecting a full-blown interview um, supposedly with one of my brothers, Mahudjit. And that's my brother. Shouts out to Ushereth. That's my brother. Shouts out to all my brothers and sisters in the real truth. Okay? Can I mention something else? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And the other thing I didn't like about IUIC, how um, they blessed in Islam when the so-called Bishop Nathaniel, the main leader who started this, was in Islam before. And he's to copy everything out of Islam. How in the hell you can start your own organization and start bless, blasting Islam? They, you dogging them Islam, um, Muslims, and all the stuff they do because they worship the only true one God. And you don't, you worship Jesus. So how do you think God is going to take your side from the uh, the Islamic? How you think uh, God is going to take your side when you're blessing the, the people who's worshiping only one true God, which is Islam? There you go. There you go. So there you have it. You know, I normally don't have my wife on, but today was a special. And you got to hear from somebody else. The lies that are in IUIC and how they have been hurting people's families. You see, everybody doesn't get kicked out for drinking, drugging, and sexing. There's some people who just say, you know what? This is not in line with the Bible. Th this teaching I don't agree with. And they still give them people a hard time. Even though we ain't one of them brothers that's been put out, then come back and then get put out. And then come back. We, we've we never been put out for any of our conduct. We left. We left because we didn't agree with the teaching. That's right. And we still got put on the bolo, bolo list. Okay? <laughs> so there you have it. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.